What's going on, everyone? So there is a lot of hype and a lot of talk centered around Giannis to the Lakers. Uh, there was even a report about the Lakers and the Knicks seen as the biggest suitors for Giannis, uh, that both teams would be interested in the two-time MVP, uh, which makes it a lot of sense, right? If Giannis was to leave the Milwaukee Bucks, which, again, don't get too ahead of yourself, right? More likely than not, the Lakers and the Knicks will just be used as heavy leverage We've seen plenty of stars over the years use the Lakers and even the Knicks as leverage to like, hey, if you don't do this, I'm going to go here. Um, you know, so the whole idea of like Giannis potentially leaving the Bucks and going to the Lakers, it's something that I just don't want people to get too high on, too, uh, too much other hopes on. Uh, is it possible? Absolutely. You know, nobody thought we'd get Shaq. Nobody thought, you know, we'd get Powell for a bag of peanuts. Nobody thought we'd get LeBron James, right? Like, the Lakers always seem to get their guy at some point, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? Another Milwaukee Buck. Uh, so the idea that, like, LeBron leaves and Giannis comes in is really not that far-fetched. Especially if he were to leave Milwaukee, you would imagine with his level of star, he would want to go to a bigger market. Because... He would also be in the later years of his career, right? And that's usually when these stars like to go to those bigger markets. So that way they can start building their brand, make more money than they've ever made. And then also it's an easier transition into life after basketball. Uh, and especially with the Lakers and being in Los Angeles and Silicon Valley and all that stuff, the, the amount of money that these athletes can make is ridiculous, right? LeBron goes to the Lakers and like overnight becomes a billionaire. Same thing would probably happen to Giannis. So there is a lot of incentive, especially for these stars in the later stages of their career to go to a team like the Lakers. The Knicks being another big market, they're a team that is really good in the Eastern Conference that you could see like, hey, if you just plugged in Giannis, they're probably the best team in the East, if not the best team in the East, and maybe even the entire league. So it makes sense in those regards. Now, again, I... Milwaukee is going to do everything in their power to keep you honest. They're not going to want to just lose him. The other thing is, too, is that if he gets traded, right? So, like, if Milwaukee feels like, uh-oh, Giannis might actually leave, then they put him on the trade market. I don't know if the Lakers would be able to trade for him, right? I think that they have the young pieces, right? Like Austin Reeves, you know, uh, Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt, Max Christie, JHS, uh, you know, Maxwell Lewis, like all of these guys, I think you could package together and go get Giannis, right? If Giannis is available and you basically say our entire roster is yours outside of Anthony Davis, right? You could take whatever you want, just leave us AD. Because Giannis and Anthony Davis, I mean, you have the best front court. You might have one of the best front courts in NBA history. Defensively, you have the, probably the best uh, defensive front court in NBA history. Talk about the two best defensive players in the entire league by, like, every metric. Uh, good luck trying to score in the interior. Both guys could be interchangeable, right? Both guys can defend out in the perimeter if need be. Both guys could go give you a 30 and 15 on any given night. Like, good luck. At that point, you just need to fill out the roster. And the Lakers have shown time and time again especially under Rob Palenka, that he has a really good way of finding those players, the, that youth, that depth, and building and filling out the roster. He's done it several times already. You know, there have been some experiments and stuff like that, but for the most part, right, he just goes right back to, okay, here's the core group. Like, look at what we got today. And Lakers draft department has been, you know, A1. So you're going to find a lot of young talent. You're going to have players that are going to want to take a discount to go play with Giannis and Anthony Davis and contend for an NBA championship. You're going to have the, you know, the Malik Monks and the Lonnie Walkers and the Cam Reddishes and the, you know, Jackson Hayes and those guys who look at it and go, man, if I can bet on myself, go to the Lakers on a discount and play well, then I can, you know, get a better contract elsewhere. So it makes a lot of sense. You trade whatever you can. The only reason I have concerns that the Lakers in a bidding war could lose, there are a lot of teams, these other, like Oklahoma City, the Knicks even, who is another destination that makes a lot of sense for Giannis. They not only have a, a you know plethora of young talent, they also have a treasure chest that's just overflowing with picks and assets, 
right? Like, so that's where it comes. Like, the Knicks could give them, like, eight first-round picks and, like, an R.J. Barrett, uh, whatever. They could basically say our entire roster is yours outside of, you know, uh, Jalen Brunson, right? Like, everything else is yours. You could take it, right? Like, and so they could give a really just, like, historic-level package if need be. To me, it would boil down to what do what package does Milwaukee value, right? Do they value a, like, let's say Reeves, um, like a D'Lo Reeves, a Rui, and Vando trade over, you know, like an R.J. Barrett, Grimes, Sims type trade, right? With like a bunch of draft picks. Like, that, that is where it would boil down to me. But I think the Knicks could put together a very just enticing package if need be. But, you know, do these teams also wait, right? Like if another star becomes available or say Miami ends up, you know, floundering this this Dame trade, do do some of these teams end up making a move for like Damian Lillard or something like that that takes away some assets? I don't know, right? I mean, look, the Knicks were willing to give a godfather package uh, to Zach Levine. We're willing to give a godfather package to... Uh, Donovan Mitchell, right? So if another star comes on the market every year, there seems to be you know a star or two that becomes available. Does a team like the Knicks try to go get that now rather than like, well, maybe or maybe not we get Giannis? That is something. But look, if the Lakers get Giannis, you're in a great position. And if Giannis does come and let's say he leaves in free agency, LeBron could easily return if he wanted to, especially if he's playing at a good level. Right, I mean, every year, it's like, is this LeBron's fall off? Is this the year that LeBron takes that step back? Is this the year that Father Time falls off? And even if LeBron is just like a a you know blue chip level, you know rotation guy or starter level guy, not like rotation guy in the sense of like he's like a six man or something like that, but like you know if he's let's say he goes from thirty eight and eight to like you know uh, uh, eighteen five and five. That's still very good, right? And his IQ and just his ability to adapt and stuff. Like, I don't know. And especially if he can improve his three-point shot. I know last year was really rough for LeBron. and was just not a great look for LeBron James uh, shooting-wise. But if he can kind of just get back to being that 36% three-point shooter and maybe even improve between now and that time, um, which, you know, it's LeBron James. There's no thought otherwise. Uh, then... Maybe that works, and you have you know LeBron, Giannis, and Davis as your front court, and then at that point you know you have like Gabe Vincent as your starting point guard, and then you just got to get a shooting guard. Maybe you're able to keep you know Max Christie or something like that, right? And then you could have Christie plugged in. That would be perfect. So you got you know a defensive unit that's just great. Um, got versatility. You got shooting. You got everything you need. Like that could work out. Um, and then you're just kind of rounding out the bench. But like I said, I mean, even if you, even if when all is said and done, right, say LeBron leaves and you end up trading essentially everybody to get Giannis, you'd have Giannis AD and like 60, 70 plus million, depending on where the cap spices, because the cap is supposed to skyrocket in 2025. So you could be looking at like Giannis AD and then like, you know, 70 plus million in cap space, you could easily fill out a a championship level roster around those two. I mean, you already have at that point, probably if not the best duo in the entire league in AD and Giannis. Anthony Davis would be far and away the best player that Giannis has ever played with. So is that something else too? And does Giannis try to push his way to the Lakers, right? Like that's another big thing too. Like, it, yeah, like teams like the Knicks or OKC, like I wouldn't mind seeing Giannis on OKC. Like if I remove my Laker bias, like him and SGA would be a lot of fun too. And they have a lot of youth and talent and stuff. And, you know, Chet Holmgren would be a nice like kind of package to, to build around to maybe trade for Giannis. So they could get that done. And then they have like a ton of draft picks and stuff. Um, you know, San Antonio, like there's a couple places that I look at and go like, all right, like, Giannis makes a lot of sense for, but one, would he want to go to a smaller market again? He is a guy that is comfortable in a small market, that likes a small market, that 
I don't think it would be that far-fetched to think so, but I just think for business, brand, and growth, you're not going to grow bigger than you would going to the Lakers, right? With all that hype, all that brand. Uh, and does he look at that and even have his people in the background going like, hey, you got to go to Lakers, right? Like we saw that with LeBron. A lot of questions of like, is he going to Lakers, right? Like LeBron went, didn't go to Lakers solely for basketball reasons. Right? There were other teams he could have went to and maybe even won more championships by now. It was more of like you know his wife, his kids, they wanted to go to L.A., they wanted to go to L.A. schools. Business-wise, it made a ton of sense. Build all those connections, get into Hollywood, get into Silicon Valley, get into all these things, you know, start the school, do all this stuff, right? And then you know, also the Lakers are the Lakers, and they'll do whatever it takes to win an NBA championship. So LeBron was betting that the Lakers would do whatever it takes, and it led to him winning an NBA championship. So it turned out to be a win, 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 win for LeBron. And now LeBron's in a position to potentially win an NBA championship again this year with a very good roster. So Giannis could look at it a lot of the same way of like, yes, I could go there. I could, I'd have Anthony Davis, who would be the best player by far that I've ever played with. And us two alone is enough to, to dominate and take over the league. Uh, I could grow my brand and, you know, my name and my just legacy bar none. If I win an NBA championship with the Lakers, I'd forever be cemented, right? It maybe even win multiple. It just no matter how you slice it, it, it makes a lot of sense for Giannis to, to maybe look at the Lakers and push to go there. So it makes a lot of sense, but I also think a lot of it will be leverage, right? I think Milwaukee really dropped the ball. Right, like, I think if it was me, and this is just me personally, and I said this last year, I thought Milwaukee needed to go younger and kind of hit the retool button on the Milwaukee Bucks, and instead they doubled down, and I don't really think that that's the right approach. And based on Giannis's comments, that doesn't seem like it seems like Giannis agrees more with me, and he doesn't like the double down because now you're locked into a team that, yes, is a contender and, yes, will very likely be one of the best teams, but they're all getting older. Drew Holiday has even mentioned about retiring after this contract. Chris Middleton, there's a lot of questions of, is he the, the second guy, right? Like, does do Milwaukee need another star? You know, you got Brooke Lopez, who's aging. Like, it's an older roster that has a lot of question marks that now you're locked into for the next three to four years, right? Like, that's a real problem where it's like, you were almost better off of having Giannis stay and remain patient and tell him, like, hey, dude, like, we're going we're gonna to kind of retool this a little bit. We're going to get a couple pieces, try to go a little younger, and, you know, try to, you know, stay competitive, stay a team that can win. But, you know, let, like, let's start looking in different directions. Maybe go look for, like, a younger center. Like, you know, things like that. It's not like there was a ton of options in free agency, so that's probably what Milwaukee was looking at is, like, you know, there's not, like, a ton of great options here that we could go and do and work with. But I don't know. Like, um, it's just it just feels like Milwaukee is kind of in a rock and a hard place. And if they have another disappointing season this year, does that start ramping up? Giannis leaving and now they're in a position where they like hey like we got to trade this guy could be a problem but anyway as always this is a discussion so I pass a question on you let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below what do you think what do you think of uh Giannis and the Lakers do you think it's just leverage do you think that like no like it's a real possibility have a feel whatever your thoughts are I'd love to hear it let me know down in the comments